chapter 5, verse 4. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Jesus, for your teaching, because this is the bedrock foundation of your kingdom. And God, we want to know what it looks like to live in your kingdom, to have the lifestyle and the mindset of the king. And God, you are so humble. You are such a humble king that you did not come to be served, but you came to serve me. We continue to arm our mind, align our mind with the things of you because God we have the mind of Christ because Christ lives in us through the Holy Spirit and we bring glory to the Father in heaven we thank you God for your word today speak to us in a way that only you could we love you in Jesus name we pray amen a um, couple of questions come to mind the first one is this uh, why would a person who are mourning be blessed why do you think the Bible is saying that Okay, and the second question is this. There's a promise to be comforted. What do you think it means to be comforted here? And the third question is this. What does that word mean to you? What is Jesus speaking to you through that specific word there? So those are the three questions I want us to think about. And I want to just dive into this real quickly. I want to dive into the Beatitude um, which is uh, the f uh, the first couple of verses in Matthew chapter 5, uh, verse 3, all the way to verse 10 specifically, well, till verse 12 uh, specifically. And this is the beginning of the teaching of Jesus when he saw the multitude. He saw the multitude like a sheep without shepherds. And that's how Jesus sees them. And Jesus sees them not with eyes of judgment, but eyes of compassion, because he sees with the Father's eye. And um, of course, the current crowd in that moment were also the Pharisees who see all these crowds as a crowd of sinner unworthy of the affection and attention of God because only they deserve it because they are the only one righteous because they are the only one who is holier than everybody else. Well, Jesus was going to lay out what it looks like for those who belong in the kingdom of God. And um, yesterday we talked about blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. But today I want us to tackle blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. Now, when you think of mourning, you think of loss, you think of grief, you think a season where somebody died, where you have lost something very, very precious to you. It is a season marked maybe with pain and suffering, but yet it says blessed are those who, who mourn for they shall be comforted. And I don't know about you, but there is power in the gospel of the kingdom of God that we don't have to be afraid of suffering nor mourning because the promise is this, that there is joy awaiting us on the other side, that there is an exchange that Jesus did on the cross, that Jesus did not only die for our sins, but did you know he also died for every failure? Did you know that he also died for every single trauma that we want ever have gone through our anger, our disappointment, our grief, our sadness. Jesus died for it all. It doesn't mean that we will never go through it, but understand this, as you go through it, that there is a process of formation that God is doing in your life that cannot be done outside of experiencing the full facet of humanity and experiencing the redemption of God. You can never experience true joy until you have grieved. You can never experience true health until you've experienced sickness. You can never appreciate having something until you had nothing. And when Jesus spoke to this crowd, there were a crowd filled with grief and suffering. There were a crowd that was filled with mourning because they understood they, they are missing something in their life. They have lost something. Uh, maybe they have lost somebody, but maybe they also realize that uh, as every single one of us outside of Jesus, uh, once upon a time, will come to a point to realize that we are missing something eternal, that we are missing a peace apart from God. And we mourn even internally because something died. That is a fellowship and intimacy with God that died. But Jesus came, the King came. He says, if you would come to me, 
can I tell you, you will be comforted. What you've been seeking for, I have. Those who are mourning come before God and there is a joy in exchange. I want to give you a peace and joy that goes beyond human understanding. The peace and joy I give you, Jesus said, the world cannot give. And it is a peace and joy of being born again into the family of God that we will never lose that relationship ever again that we are in the hand of our Father and no one can snatch us away. No sin, no death, no power in heaven, in hell, or under, or on the earth can ever separate us from the love of God. What an amazing promise. And I want to encourage every single one of you, maybe you are in a season of mourning. Can I tell you that the Holy Spirit who is present in your life right now, as you're listening to the sound of my voice, it's not just me, but He is speaking through me and He's comforting you in the season that you're in. Would you allow Him to be the comforter? Would you allow Jesus to be king over your life? Would you allow Him to show you what it means to experience true comfort, true fulfillment that can only come by knowing your king? Congratulations if you are in a state of mourning. Can I tell you, your king wants to meet with you. And your king wants to bring you to a space of comfort. And what an encouraging word this is. And I can't wait to dive into the other ones tomorrow as you will see that our God has a completely different message than the world. Has a completely different message than the Pharisees, than the religious leaders who oftentimes misrepresented God, but Jesus came to show His Father. And His Father is a comforter. His Father is close to those who are brokenhearted. His Father is close to those who are poor in spirit, those who are mourning. If you are experiencing these things, the Father is close to you. I love you guys. I can't wait to share with you guys tomorrow. God bless you.